Pennsylvania is a vibrant state with innovative people who need a safe and reliable transportation system to live and work here. For the Commonwealth to compete on a national or a global level, significant investments in our infrastructure are necessary. A core function of our government is to provide infrastructure that facilitates economic growth through commerce. We have all experienced the consequences of outdated infrastructure, including including crumbling roads, unsafe bridges, aging rail cars and buses, and hours of wasted time on congested highways or inner city gridlock. That's why the Transportation Task Force accepted the challenge of defining the problem and offering a way to move forward. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the members of the task force for their time and effort in producing this report. On behalf of the task force, we thank our House Majority Leadership Team for standing here with us today and for their commitment to implementing our recommendations and investing in Pennsylvania's infrastructure and future. This task force report, which you will find on my website at www.repwhite.com, contains a bold infrastructure proposal for ending diversions, improving efficiencies, and empowering localization. In the past, the legislature has made several serious attempts to fix and upgrade our transportation infrastructure. In 07, they passed Act, 8, Act 44. And later, you will, in 2013, they passed Act 89. It actually became Pennsylvania's most comprehensive piece of state transportation legislation in decades. To help close our ongoing funding gap, Act 89 invested an additional $2.3 billion to $2.4 billion for transportation by the fifth year of the plan. To modernize our transportation financing structure, Act 89 eliminated the flat 12 cent gas tax and uncapped the wholesale oil company franchise tax. I'm sure you all remember this. But revenue projections have fallen short as more fuel efficient vehicles like hybrids and electric models reduce the demand for gas and cutting back on gas tax revenues. Then this past April, an audit of PennDOT revealed that an estimated $4.5 billion was diverted from the state's motor license fund to the Pennsylvania State Police since fiscal year 2012. Currently, an estimated $1.25 billion, or 65% of the state police budget, is paid for with nearly one-third of the entire motor license fund. Moving, moving forward, the task force recommends three key guidelines to pulling the Commonwealth away from this funding crisis. First, we must end the diversions. Second, we must improve competition. And third, we must localize. And today, you will hear from our various task force members each of the pieces of legislation that will help to accomplish this end goal. As legislators, it is our responsibility to strengthen our transportation foundation to move Pennsylvania forward. We may be a diverse state with competing rural and urban interests, but we rely on one another to be competitive nationally and internationally. We are one Pennsylvania, and we must unite behind an innovative plan to improve our transportation infrastructure. So at this time, I would like to introduce Lori Mazgorski to discuss the first bill in our proposal, House Bill 2060. Good afternoon. Act 44 of 2007 required the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission to provide PennDOT with $450 million annually for highways, bridges, public, and public transit. However, in 2013, Act 89 modified the pay payments to dedicate the full amount to public transit and non-highway related projects. As a result, the Turnpike Commission has been forced to raise tolls for 11 straight years while causing the Turnpike to reduce its rebuilding program by 13% and forcing uh, their debt levels to more than 13 billion. The Turnpike Commission needs to make critical investments to power economic growth across the Commonwealth and to provide relief to its customers from excessive toll increases. In addition, our transit agencies need to be adequately funded so they can provide essential transportation services, grow their systems, and support the demands of our growing and changing job markets. Beginning in 2022, the Turnpike's payments to PennDOT for transit will be reduced to 
to 50 million, while 450 million will be provided by the general fund. In the near future, I will be introducing legislation that would begin to reduce the debt obligations of the Turnpike Commission. This legislation would provide relief to the Commission prior to 2022 by gradually reducing the obligation by $150 million per year for three years. Currently, the legislature is unrestricted in its appropriation of vehicle sales tax revenues. By appropriating these revenues for mass transit funding, the General Assembly can assist in the reduction of the debt obligation of the Turnpike Commission, define a mechanism for funding the needs of mass transportation, and create spending control measures on the general fund. I look forward to working with my colleagues to bring about this legislation as well as the other recommendations in our Build to Lead Transportation Report. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to call forward Matt Gobbler and Linda Culver. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Matt Gobbler. I represent the 75th District in Elk and Clearfield Counties, and I'm here to lay out the problem, as this task force has recognized it, that relates to the diversion of our motor license funds to program outside of transportation. As I was discussing this problem with an interested constituent, I was trying to remember, recall off the top of my head, exactly how much money was being diverted. My constituent didn't reference his notes. Instead, he looked at me and he said, well, it's $737 million a year. And then he plainly said in a memorable way, and that 737 won't fly. There's a very important principle that we should live by. We should expect taxpayers to pay for the government that they use, and we should expect government agencies to use the taxpayer dollars for the intended purposes for which they were collected. We collect these monies from transportation users in the form of fuel taxes, registration fees, and other taxes and fees such as motor carrier taxes and IFTA. As outlined in our report, the age and condition of our transportation infrastructure dictates that every transportation dollar must be targeted at addressing these critical needs in our transportation system. Yet, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania continues to divert nearly three quarters of a billion dollars a year out of our motor license fund to pay for our state police who provide law enforcement and crime fighting that benefits all Pennsylvanians, not just our highway users. This is an expense that should be shouldered by the general fund, and we've got a plan to move that direction and free up these critical resources in our motor license fund. My colleague, Representative Linda Schlegel-Culver, will further discuss this initiative that we are recommending. Uh, thank you, Representative Gobbler. Uh, as my colleague and co-sponsors of House Bill 2061 just identified and explained the problem, I will be addressing our proposed solution to accelerate and hopefully one day end the diversions from the motor licensing fund for the state police operating budget. I think we can all agree that the state police provide all Pennsylvanians with an extremely valuable service, and no one would dispute that they should be equitably funded. However, the trend developed many years ago to divert funding for the Motor License Fund to reimburse the state police for the work that they do on our highway system. But somewhere along the way, that trend continued to grow until the Motor License Fund monies became 65% of the state police budget, engulfing a third of the entire Motor Licensing Fund. This diversion has caused many projects across the Commonwealth to become stalled, delaying maintenance, and impeding our ability to plan and adequately prepare for growth and job creation in the future. In 2016, the legislature included in the fiscal code a measure that capped a portion of the funds going to the state police at $101 million, with a plan to decrease that amount by 4% per year until that amount reaches $500 million cap. Please bear in mind, any decrease in funding from the state police from the Motor License Fund will help transportation infrastructure. However, the legislation must also look at ways to replace the line item with alternative funding for the state police. Our legislation proposes to double the rate of the transfer from 4% to 8% per year, allowing the Motor License Fund to be restored faster and invest in more infrastructure projects that will allow us to continue to build a strong economy for all Pennsylvanians. Thank you. Jonathan Fritz, you're up, buddy. Wonderful. Thank you, Martina. No problem. Good afternoon, friends. I appreciate the appointment by leadership to this task force and a tip of the hat to my good friend and colleague, Rep. Martina White.
for serving as chair. I'm proud to bring forward House Bill 2063, a bill that would compel PennDOT to increase use of contract work, deploying the design-build model for construction projects. Prior to use of this model, a separation in engineering and design from the actual construction would lead to an incongruency between the two phases. Construction impediments were blamed on the design, and the design agency would blame the construction firm, an old-fashioned case of finger-pointing. The end result was an increase in cost, an increase in the amount of time required to complete the project. By bringing both phases together, project risk is decreased, efficiencies are realized, and end product quality is enhanced, all the while providing a true savings to the taxpayer. As well, this bill allows for municipalities to create design-build pavement agreements in order to manage that city or borough's entire road system. In short, friends, House Bill 2063 helps streamline projects and save money, of which were critical aims for this task force and our Commonwealth. Thank you and good day. Uh, Ryan Warner. Thanks, Ryan. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I am Representative Ryan Warner. I represent the 52nd District in Westmoreland and Fayette Counties. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to Representative White for all her hard work that she's put into this task force and our fellow task force uh, committee members. It has been an honor to serve with you on this um, task force over the last few months. Uh, there's no question that we need a solid transportation and infrastructure system to help our Commonwealth economy thrive. It has been an honor to serve on this task force with my colleagues from all different parts of the state. And with our diverse regions, backgrounds, and experiences, I think we have developed a strategy that can help every big city, small town, suburban community, and rural township across the Commonwealth. I'll be introducing legislation to help empower our counties and local governments to address their transportation needs through the use of a county infrastructure bank. So many of our communities are struggling to generate the necessary resources to keep up with their infrastructure needs. With this bill, the statewide infrastructure bank would be able to offer better loan terms and rates to counties that use the banks, thus allowing them to better leverage taxpayer dollars to make infrastructure improvements. I'd like to thank everyone for all the work they put into this task force report, and I look forward to continuing our work to enact the proposals and ensure a brighter future for our Commonwealth and its citizens. Thank you. So I'm next. Um, I will be presenting House Bill 2065, and it's an opportunity for us to expand public-private partnership opportunities here in Pennsylvania. What these thing, what these do are help our Commonwealth leverage private investment. They allow us to create innovative ways to complete projects while improving efficiencies. It was an experiment designed to expedite the repair of similarly designed bridges in mass and reduce costs. And these P3s have proven successful, bringing replacement times to three and a half years compared to eight to 12 years using conventional methods. My bill will allow PennDOT's ability to expand the P3 program. I'd also like to bring forward John Lawrence. Appreciate all of your work on this task force report, John. Here you go. Thank you, Representative White. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today, and as uh, echoed by some of my colleagues earlier, I appreciate all of the hard work that's been put into this task force. We've met, um, I guess, I don't even know how many times. A lot of times. A lot of times. <laughs> so. Echoing some of the comments made by Representative Culver earlier, keeping our highways safe is a major role for the Pennsylvania State Police. They serve our Commonwealth fi with fidelity and honor each and every day, but for many years we've paid for the State Police by moving significant funds out of the Motor License Fund, or the gas tax. Last year alone, as was previously mentioned by Representative Gobbler, it was uh, over $700 million, and that's a decrease from previous years. So let's be clear, the gas tax should be going to fix roads and bridges instead of going to pay for the state police. The task force identified this as an issue. We believe we should be looking to wean state police funding off the motor license fund more rapidly. So the proposal that I'm putting forward as part of this package is to take a look at fines generated from speeding tickets and other citations. 
I think if you were to stop most folks on the street and ask them where does the money go um, from speeding tickets, I think most folks would say, well, it goes to fund traffic safety or, I mean, the state police. It turns out that the state police get almost nothing from the issuance of a speeding ticket. The fine money gets distributed to a laundry list of government agencies and the general fund. It makes no sense that we are funding the state police out of motor license fund and then revenue from speeding tickets goes to the general fund. My bill will look to support traffic safety and enforcement with fines generated for moving violations so we can keep more money in the motor license fund to fix crumbling roads and bridges. Thank you. So I'm also going to be presenting another bill today, uh, House Bill 2067. It actually helps to take the revenue that's generated from a new Philadelphia casino in South Philly uh, and those revenues, those gaming revenues would help to provide mass transit services and capital projects uh, right back in our, my hometown, Philadelphia. Um, so we're looking forward to that legislation. I'd also like to present, um, let me see here. Let me see if uh, Torin Ecker, are you here? Oh great, there you are buddy, yeah. there you are. Sorry about that, thank you. I blend in, I know. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Representative Tornecker. I represent the 193rd District, parts of Adams and Cumberland County. And again, I just want to echo what my colleagues have said. I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this transportation task force. I appreciate our leadership team uh, having the, the initiative and ingenuity to come up with this task force and our, our, our wonderful leader, our, our, our wonderful leader and uh, chairwoman over the summer, uh, 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 Martina, here, who's, who's done a wonderful job. My, my particular bill in the package uh, is House Bill 2069, which deals with consolidating the permits for larger projects and larger highway projects. Time and time again, we heard from the stakeholders that we talked to and met with that the permitting process and the things that actually take before you can put a shovel on the ground are just taking too long. This particular project will help streamline that process so that these projects can get off the ground and move faster so that we can actually fix roads and fix bridges instead of worrying about permitting process and, and, the, and the red tape that goes along with it. We as a caucus have t taken, a, taken a lead in this already this year and this is just another step in the right direction to, to get government to work for us. And I'm proud to, to offer this bill and, and again hopefully expedite the permit process for some of these large projects which folks around our commonwealth are, are really in desperate uh, concern of fixing. So again, I'm just, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to have uh, to be a serve on this, uh, even as a freshman, and, uh, and I, I appreciate the work all of our, our colleagues have done on this. And at this time, I'd like to present Cheryl Delosier. Good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and all the work that we have done with the task force. Uh, the work that we did with this transportation task force has allowed us to plan for the future, and that is the goal. The future with efficient and functioning roads that allow infrastructure to best serve our families, businesses, and our communities. I've been working for the people of the 88th District for the last few years and have uh, worked in public policy my entire career. As I have learned, uh, those that are responsible for spending our hard-earned tax dollars have a great responsibility and one that needs to be forward-thinking with the full comprehension of not what PA is today, but what it, not what it is right this minute, but what it's going to be in five, 10, and 15 years from now down the road. It's a very, it's, it is extremely easy to sit back, whether you're in elected office or not, and say that we need to say no, that we need to say no to increased spending when we need it, to say no to any revenue generation when we need it, and say no to planning for the future of our commonwealth. Those that sit back and just say no are not doing their jobs. So we, the people that are elected to represent our districts, need to make the hard decisions. They're not always the popular decisions, and it also requires us to look forward. And it needs, we need to see the issues that we will face in our state and plan accordingly. Otherwise, we are not doing our jobs. We need to be, in Pennsylvania, we need to have that strong infrastructure, we need to have safe roads, and we need to pay our debts. 
These are debts that have been incurred by the folks that you see behind me. We weren't even in office. And most of the House wasn't even in office when debts were incurred. But the bottom line is we still have to pay them. So we have to turn that around and the tax force looked at the many different ways we need to pay our debts, but also we need to make sure that we have transportation and infrastructure in Pennsylvania. And even after all the years of working in this building, all of the stakeholders that we heard from, I learned so many things about where our dollars are going and where our taxpayers' dollars can be better spent and how it is that we can be proactive for our taxpayers. So we need to make sure that the part that I am going to, I look forward to taking part in all of the bills that we have because each and every one of them go to a different area that's important to Pennsylvania. We have a very diverse state. We have many, many priorities, but the biggest priority is safety across the board, no matter what issue you bring up. Safety on our roads, safety on our transit, safety on our buses. We don't want accidents to happen and it to come back and say, what could we have done better? We need to be thinking forward. What we also need to do is competition. We've talked about that in a couple of the bills. One of the areas that I'm going to be looking at is taking a look at PennDOT and asking, because where are we doing our good job? Asphalt and concrete are two products that we use. Which one's better for our roads? That came up time and time again when we talked to our, our stakeholders. What's better for our roads? We need to find out. And that's where the area that I'm going to focus on um, independently to take a look and ask PennDOT and other entities to study to find out what are we doing right with these two types of uh, uh, subject matters and where can we do better. So we need to come up with that. It's important to look for our future and we need to look for ways that we can make sure that each and every dollar that we have going into the, the general fund, PennDOT, all of our different areas with infrastructure are doing the best for our taxpayers. And there are many issues that we can do and that's why I'm excited about all of the different ideas that came out of this task force. Thank you to the Chairwoman uh, White. She did a great job hurting all the cats and making sure that not only were the stakeholders, but all of us were coordinated. And I want to, and I think everybody here can say that I want my kids, when they're old enough to be paying taxes into our general fund, I want them not to be paying for the debts that we decided many, many years ago. I want them, I don't want to kick the can down the road, as they say. I don't want to make sure that my kids are paying for decisions I make now. We need to make good decisions, pay our debts, and have safe roads. Thank you very much. I'd like to bring up another bill, uh, bill number 2068, which is going to allow for our local municipalities to implement referendums on their on the voter ballots so that they can help to fund their local projects. And that's pretty exciting because it gives us opportunities to see where people are more open to the different funding uh, resources that are available locally. Uh, and then finally, um, I'd like to bring forward Jesse Topper. I know you have a lot to say today, Jesse. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you, Martina. So I have the portion of the package that I get to call on the federal government to work in a bipartisan manner to present a significant infrastructure bill before the president so he can sign. So I'm sure that won't be a light lift at all. But we, in, in all seriousness, we know that transportation and infrastructure is a core function of government, not just at the state level, but also at the federal level. We have miles and miles of interstate highway here in Pennsylvania, and we recognize that in order for us to be truly successful in moving us into a new growth in transportation infrastructure, we do need the federal government to be partners in that. That's what my resolution will do, we'll call upon that action in Washington, D.C., as we continue to work here in Harrisburg. Thank you. All right, uh, and then finally, to, to close it out, I'd like to bring up uh, Chairman Tim. Uh, well, let me see here. Do you mind if uh, Brian Cutler? Okay, here you go. <laughs> uh, Chairman Hennessy. He's been a wonderful asset to our team. He has been advising us on these issues, and he's very knowledgeable with all of what is going on here in Pennsylvania, and we're grateful to have him here standing with us today. Thank you, Martina. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> I apologize for being late. Uh, I was occupied in my office. The, uh, I think the idea to put together this task force, uh, I germinated with uh, Brian Cutler, our Republican Majority Leader, and I want to thank him for doing that, and I want to thank Martina for chairing the uh, task force. It was, uh, she did a yeoman's job in terms of trying to keep everybody uh, on the phone calls. We had a lot of conference calls. We had a lot of meetings. Uh, there were many, many hours spent by lots of people 
who have their, their hands in the uh, transportation industry and making the decisions with regard to the transportation industry. Uh, I think we all learned a lot. There was a, a lot to be gained by the interplay of different ideas from different and different perspectives from around the Commonwealth. So it's one of those situations where everybody working together makes the, the better product. And, and I think that we've done that. We're proud of the, the product that this task force has put forward. And I think uh, we can move forward as a state with, on the benefits of that and the, the, the bills that will be rolling out as a result of the work that was done. So thank everyone who was served on this task force, uh, and let's get to work getting those bills passed. Thank you very much. And now we'll call on. Thank oops. you. Oh, great. Yes. Uh, so, and now I'd like to call on Leader Cutler to, to close out the press conference. Thank you. Thank you, Martina. And thank you, members of the committee. I want to echo the chairman's comments regarding this task force and the work product that they've worked on. Uh, as you'll note, this is a diverse geographical dispersion of our members. And a lot of folks have asked us in terms of our approach so far on this issue. And the truth is we as a caucus had to figure out where we were first in order to identify the problems and then any proposed solutions that might be there. Uh, because here in Harrisburg, too often, the, the answers are simply this. Let's just raise taxes and we'll pay more. Uh, but you'll notice that many of these solutions are thought out. It's a thoughtful approach in terms of particular problems with particular solutions that target the areas that we're going after. So in terms of procedure, and I've already been asked by some of you what that will be, this package, like all the other packages that we have dealt with up to this portion of our legislative session, will go through the exact same process. We'll reach out to our Democrat colleagues. We're going to work them through the committees. This committee by design included members of the Appropriations Committee and the Transportation Committee. The reason for that is because it's not just a transportation issue and it's not just a funding issue. They, they work hand in hand and needed to be solved together. The geographical diversity reflects the different natures of our members and viewpoints all across the Commonwealth. I want to commend Martina for the, her great work that she has done here and we'll work the bills through. Unfortunately, as is often the case, uh, when we work some bills through, all of them may not make it across the finish line, but we're going to give it our effort to do everything we can because this problem is too big. And I think Representative Delosier hit the nail on the head. For too long, things have been kicked down the road. I was one of the two members who was here when they voted the proposal to tax and toll I-80. That bill is now due today. And it's what we argued on the floor at that time, and it's time that we no longer do that. So we need to look for solutions that work and solutions that can get 102 votes here, 26 in the Senate, and hopefully the signature of the governor. That work will be ongoing. But as many of you know from all the other issues that you're following today, there's a whole host of bills, and we're late for a 1 o'clock caucus. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. I want to thank you for the opportunity to discuss this and share our ideas at this point. And we'll look forward to talking to you more as we roll these through the committee process. Thank you. Be happy to take any questions if anyone has any. Sure. The revenue proposed in this package, it's mostly trying to shuffle around money that's already there to cover things in a different way. Like you mentioned using police fines to try and cover state police coverage. So the so proposal definitely discusses ending diversions. I think that's been a major concern for the task force. Monies have been dispersed elsewhere that have been generated from transportation type efforts uh, or sources. And that has been the priority of the task force to make sure that those monies are no longer being allocated out towards those types of initiatives that are that should be going towards transportation infrastructure investment. Uh, the transfers, won't that be more of a burden on the general fund? I mean, it sounds like I know you're trying to bring in some of the speeding ticket revenue and whatnot, but I can't imagine that that would cover all of the money that you're taking away by tapering down these fund transfers. So one of the goals of the of the legislative body has been to make sure that increased spending is contained. And as you heard from our one of our task force members, Lori Mizgorski, she expressed that yes, you know, our our general fund has the has been spending uh, you know all in all different areas and using vehicle sales tax that comes from our, our vehicle sales in Pennsylvania towards any types of different uh, general fund obligations. And we believe that those money should be going towards transportation infrastructure investment. She referenced the fact that if you have more electric vehicles, there's 
less than gas Correct. tax, this there, was, is there was a bill to do just that. It seemed like it stalled out. Is that going to be moving Representative Carroll's bill? Is that going to be part of this as well? So uh, I actually support Representative Carroll's bill. I think a number of the members of the task force have also uh, are supportive of that effort. We see the future as being something that is um, significantly different from what we have today. Right now, you have vehicles that are you know relying on gasoline, but there's been a new opportunity for us to expand revenues through the. No, no longer utilization of the gas tax. You know, we need to rethink what we've been doing for a while and look toward new opportunities for revenue generation. And that includes the the type of bill that you're talking about, Representative Carroll, that puts a fee on our uh, non-gas uh, usage of vehicles, right? So um, electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, I own one myself and I'm still, I still voted for the that bill. And I think it's important because our future really does project that those types of vehicles are going to be heavily used on our roadways, but they're right now not necessarily paying for them, for that use. Sorry for the long-winded answer there, but in any case, uh, thank you so much, everyone. I don't see any other questions in the audience. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to be here today and supporting our efforts here in Pennsylvania to invest in our infrastructure. Have a great day.